Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, where every week we tell you interesting things about interesting people in about 5 minutes. And now here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, welcome to the show. I just wanted to take a moment just to mention that this is the second to last episode of season four of the 5 Minute Biographies podcast. Uh, Don't worry though, we've already started recording the uh, next season, which will kick off on the 5th of July with Steve McQueen. But if you can't wait that long, um, I just wanted to let you know that that um, podcast is actually already available as a YouTube video. And so if you head off over to 5 Minute Biographies dot com forward slash youtube you'll see the steve mcqueen video is already available um but if you want to wait for the podcast that's perfectly fine and um in just to, just to make sure that you don't miss it uh why not subscribe um at uh, itunes or anywhere else where you get your podcasts from so um that being said without further ado let's get on with uh, season four episode nine of the five minute biographies podcast and Catherine de medici Catherine de' Medici was a formidable woman. She was the daughter of nobility, the mother of kings, and the wife of King Henry II of France. The times through which she lived demanded not a subservient queen, but a powerful right hand to those in charge, and although there is contention about the way in which Catherine handled some of the affairs of state, or her involvement in them, one thing is certain and that is that she can almost single-handedly be credited with keeping the institutions of the French kingdom alive during a period of war and strife. Catherine was the only child of Lorenzo de' Medici, who was the Duke of Urbino. She was born in Florence in the spring of 1519, but less than a month after her birth, both of her parents were dead. The title of Duke of Urbino was passed to Francisco Rivera, but Catherine was not out of luck, nor out of powerful friends, as her uncle was Pope Leo X, and he took a keen interest in Catherine's future as a member of the Medici family. When the Pope died in 1521, another member of the Medici family, Cardinal Giulio, was elected to the position in 1523. In 1527, during a period known as the War of the League of Cognac, the Medici family was kicked out of Florence and the young Catherine was taken as a hostage. With the help of the newly crowned Holy Roman Emperor, Charles de' Medici, Pope Clement VII managed to retake the city and liberate Catherine, following an 11-month siege in 1531. Pope Clement then set about looking for a viable husband for Catherine to help cement political alliances, When the King of France offered his son, Prince Henry, as a suitor to Catherine, Pope Clement seized the opportunity to form an alliance with one of the most powerful monarchies in Europe. The couple were married in 1533, but Henry was not to be the love of Catherine's life, and he showed little affection towards her, instead choosing to spend his time cavorting with a variety of mistresses, and even publicly acknowledging a child he had with one of them. To make things worse, Catherine lost her main support when the Pope died in the same year. When Pope Paul III would not pay the dowry that had been promised to the King of France, and also broke the alliance between the Papal States and the Kingdom of France, this hurt Catherine's prospects greatly. This insult, in addition to an inability to catch the eye of the prince or bear his children, put Catherine de' Medici politically in a very weakened state. Following the death of Prince Henry's older brother, Catherine found herself under enormous pressure to give her husband a child, as any son that she bore Henry would become the heir to the French crown. Catherine is known to have tried a wide variety of tips and tricks in an attempt to get pregnant. Eventually, following consultation with a doctor who noticed some potentially abnormal biological issues, and after taking his advice on how to resolve them, she soon declared that she was indeed expecting her first child. Catherine presented her husband with a son, whom they named Francis. But she didn't stop there, and went on to have nine more children, five boys and four girls. Although Catherine was now successfully producing heirs that would secure the future legal lineage of the Kingdom of France, her husband Henry still preferred the company of an older mistress, and treated Catherine disgracefully, 
allowing none of the normal political powers reserved for a queen consort. It seemed that Catherine was consort in name only, whereas in practice it was Diane de Poitiers, Henry's mistress, who would wield all of the political power of that position. Diane, for her part, bore Catherine no ill will, and even encouraged Henry to show her more respect and to spend more time with her. Events came to a head when Henry was mortally injured in a jousting accident. Taking a joust to the face, the splinters impaled him through his brain. His wife Catherine stayed by his bedside until he finally fell unconscious and died ten days after the accident, on the 10th of July 1559, at which point true power was passed on to her. Catherine was not as vindictive towards Diane as she might have been, and Henry's mistress retired from public life and lived in her private chateau until her death at the age of 66, on the 25th of April 1566. Catherine remained active during the reign of her first-born son, Francis II, even though she was not in legal standing as Francis was of age, thus not requiring the presence of the Queen Mother. Nonetheless, she continued to be an influencer until his death in 1560, upon which her next surviving male child, Charles, ascended to the throne as King Charles IX. This time, because Charles IX was only nine years old, his mother ruled almost unilaterally with regard to most affairs of state. Catherine would continue to be a strong, domineering influence throughout Charles's reign, as well as that of her next surviving son, Henry, who became King Henry III following the death of his brother on the 30th of May 1574. Throughout the mid to late 1500s, religious strife and war reared up throughout many parts of Europe. The Protestant Revolution, beginning with Martin Luther, had made its way into France, and the Protestant group known as the Huguenots were severely persecuted by the Catholic population, as well as the Catholic Church itself, during a period known as the French Wars of Religion. At the time, France was strongly dominated by the Catholic religion, and although at first the Huguenots were allowed to remain without significant persecution, the distrust that grew between the Catholics and the Protestants finally exploded following the death of a prominent Huguenot, Admiral Coligny, into a full-on crisis that saw mass rebellion and massacre. Although Catherine herself was a friend of the Admiral, it is she that has been left with much of the blame for the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre which occurred during the night of the 23rd and 24th of August in 1572. The massacre was the result of concern about a potential Huguenot uprising, and an order from the King to kill a group of Huguenot leaders, including Coligny, who had been gathered in Paris for the wedding of the King's sister Margaret to Henry III of Navarre. The killings went on for several weeks and spread beyond the borders of Paris. It is estimated today that anywhere between 10,000 and 70,000 people were killed. Catherine continued working for her son Henry as a diplomat and an enforcer of the king's wishes. But as time went on, Henry began to strip his mother of her power. Catherine ultimately became disenchanted with her favourite son, as she didn't have the same level of control over him that she had had over the kings that went before. On the 5th of January 1589, Catherine de' Medici died at the age of 69. However, her work was not in vain. Not only did heirs to the French crown survive, but Catherine's general policy of compromise and live to fight another day allowed her to work through multiple administrations and through some of the darkest days of the religious wars. Catherine de' Medici was an intelligent, shrewd and cunning queen, and one that historians will continue to study for centuries to come. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the 5 Minute Biographies podcast. Don't forget that this is the second to last episode of Season 4, but don't worry, Season 5 will be coming along at the beginning of July, and the first episode, Steve McQueen, has already been recorded. But if you can't wait that long, please head on over to 5minutebiographies.com forward slash YouTube, as that podcast is already available as a YouTube video, so please check it out. If you don't want to miss the start of Season 5 and indeed any other future podcasts, then please don't forget to subscribe at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. 
Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast at www.5minutebiographies.com.